Welcome home. I hope you're blessed and doing well because I'm doing great. Welcome back to the channel. I wanted to pop in this morning and share my loaf bread recipe with you. You all wanted me to do it and I am more than happy to take you step by step through the process. It's simple, it's easy, it's beginner friendly and yes, you can use versatile grains. You can use whole wheat flour if you like it, all purpose and bread flour. So you have choices. I like to use this for grilled cheese, for sandwiches, for peanut butter and jelly, whatever you like, okay? And you can also use it for other things. I just recently made some bread pudding out of the day old bread and it was delicious, okay? Um, you can tweak this recipe if you want to use like a little bit more butter, a um, little bit more sugar maybe, maybe not so much sugar. Maybe you want to um, substitute it, the sugar with honey, a tablespoon of honey instead, you can do that. If you wanted to use an alternate sugar, you can try that. I haven't used any alternate sugars because we use pure organic cane sugars. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. And I also kind of stick to certain um, brands because I do use organic non-GMO flours. So King Arthur, Bob's Red Mill, those are really good for, um, you know, just really staying true to organic grains. Um, but yeah, you all said you want some loaf bread. So let's jump into it. Um, let me know in the comment section down below how the bread turns out for you. You know, hey, let me know. I would love to know. And let's easily jump into this step-by-step -step easy tutorial on how to make loaf bread. Let's do it. All right, so I'm using rapid rise yeast, and this is what I had on hand. I also use active dry yeast. You can use that as well. They both work really well. And I'm pouring the active dry yeast into a cup of warm water. You don't want the water to be too hot because it will scald the yeast and kill it. So if it is active, it will bubble up like my yeast is doing here. And I'm gonna take that mixture, mix it in really well, and then incorporate it into a bowl. I'm gonna add one fresh egg, and I'm gonna take the egg and and add that to the liquid mixture as well and mix it well. All right, so here I'm incorporating my cane sugar and my cane brown sugar. You can use one to two tablespoons of sugar if you like, or if you're trying to reduce your sugar, you can do that. Or if you wanted to use one tablespoon of honey or two tablespoons of honey, you can do that as well. And I am going to add now a tablespoon of softened butter and a teaspoon of avocado oil. And I'm using this type of oil because it doesn't have a flavor. You don't really want to use olive oil if you don't want your bread to taste more so like olive oil. I'm going to add my tablespoon of melted butter and a fourth of a teaspoon of pink Himalayan sea salt. And you can use other salts as well. So now it's time to mix all those ingredients up well and then add the flour. I'm gonna start off with three cups of all-purpose flour here and you don't wanna use self-rising flour. So I am not packing the flour, you guys. Make sure you don't do that. Just pour the flour into the measuring cup and then just level it off and you'll add each cup in at a time. I'm gonna start off with three cups because I don't know if I particularly need the other half cup. And when I originally saw this recipe and I've read several recipes for bread making and loaf bread, you're just adding the last half cup of flour if you need it. Thank you. 
So I'm going to now switch from my regular whisk to my bread whisk and I'm going to use that because it is really good. This is a dough whisk and it's really easy to mix and stir the dough. I have a link for it in the description box below if you're interested in a nice little bread kit. And after I can't stir any longer, I'm going to change over to the best whisk ever, my hands, and they are very, very clean hands. I'm going to start to knead the dough. I'm gonna add a little flour to my cutting board here so that the flour will not stick to the board and I'll just start pressing it out. So what you're just trying to do is you want your dough to be really smooth and you want to activate the gluten strands. And in order to do that, we have to knead the dough. So I'm going to press out the dough, fold the dough from the top to the bottom, the sides, and I'm going to start working the dough. Once I fold the dough, I'm going to start to knead it. And how we knead is we'll fold on the top and we'll push forward. And once we push and roll to our, towards our wrist, we'll turn the dough. Fold again, push, roll, and turn the dough. And the more you do it, the easier it'll get. We'll just keep kneading the dough until we get it nice and smooth. And then we'll do like a window test, which they'll say, if you stretch the dough, you should be able to see through it without it breaking. And then the dough is ready. So I'll just keep kneading the dough until I feel like it's nice and smooth and it's ready. All right, so I'm gonna see if I stretch the dough, if it breaks. So it's looking like it wants to break just a little bit. I'm going to knead it a little bit more and we'll get it nice and smooth and um, ready for the first rise. So now that the dough is nice and smooth, I'll just fold it under and turn it over. I'm going to lubricate my hands and the dough with my avocado oil. And this is just to keep the dough from sticking to my bowl. I'm going to clean my bowl out and I'm going to place my dough inside and cover it. And once we cover it, we'll sit it to the side and we'll let the dough rise. So now that my dough has risen, it is time to knead again and I'm going to take it out. It is more than doubled or tripled in size. It is beautiful. Okay, time to take the dough out and we're gonna flour our surface first before we take it out. We have our loaf pan waiting and ready nearby. I have a nonstick loaf pan next to me here so I don't need to spray it with anything. Um, if you have an older pan that you've been using for quite some time and you may need to spray it with some cooking spray or lubricate it with some oil, you can do that also. Alright, so now that I've turned the dough out, I'm going to give it a nice knead. And as you can see, the gluten strands have stretched out really nicely since it's risen. It's beautiful dough. I'm going to press it out and we're going to knead again. So this time I'm just folding in all of my sides. I'm not trying to be perfect. So we're just going to knead it until we get the dough really nice and smooth. You can tell when your dough is ready because there'll be some resistance and there'll be some bounce back. So once you get that resistance that you need, you can stop because you don't want to over knead the dough. You still want your bread to be nice and soft and fluffy. So we don't want it to be hard and tough. So once you feel that resistance from the dough, more than likely your dough is ready. So I'm just going to give it a nice turn and smooth it out. And I'm going to let my dough rest on my cutting board for just a minute before I stretch 
stretch it out and give it its final roll to put into the loaf pan. We'll let it rest for about five minutes. Okay, my dough has rested and as you can see, I'm able to stretch it out without any problems at all. And I'm just gonna stretch it out. I'm gonna stretch it out, press it out, and I'm going to roll it. And I'm gonna roll it to fit into my loaf pan. Okay, and so once I get it nice and stretched out, I'm gonna take my dough and roll the dough up. And remember, this dough can be used for cinnamon rolls if you wanna make cinnamon rolls as well. So it's a really good dough for that. So I just take my rolled dough and place it down into my pan. And now I'm going to sit it aside for about five to six minutes. We're gonna let the dough rise in the pan. It may take a little bit longer depending on your environment. I'm also going to brush the top of my loaf with some softened butter. dough has risen in the pan and now it's time to go into the oven we have a preheated oven ready to go and set at 400 degrees so 400 degrees Fahrenheit we're gonna slide our bread in the center of the oven and let it bake for about 25 minutes so you'll know when it's ready because it'll be nice and risen and golden brown and absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, my bread here has turned out amazing. I love it. So I'm gonna take it out of the pan and show you all what it looks like on the sides and then we're gonna give it a slice. So now that my bread is ready and out of the oven, I do like to give it another baste of butter. Once it comes out of the oven, this makes it taste so, so good and so buttery and so yummy. If you're trying to um, reduce your butters and oils, you don't have to do this step, but it definitely makes a difference. So I've let the bread rest just for a minute to cool down a little bit, um, but it's still really warm. So I'm still using my mitten to show you all, but I wanted to take it out of the loaf pan so that you can take a look at the sides and bottom of the bread. It's absolutely beautiful. All right, so we're just gonna give it a slice now. And as you can see, it is so soft, so beautiful. This will make amazing sandwiches. I am looking forward to this and it will just be delicious as your side bread. So whatever bread you're wanting to use it for, your garlic toast, um, it would be excellent for that. Um, you can actually make French toast sticks out of this bread. It would be great for that as well. Um, you know, the recipes are endless. So here I'm using our homemade strawberry jam and I'm gonna give it a taste. is absolutely delicious you have to give it a try make sure you let me know in the comment section down below if and when you do make this loaf bread I would love to know how it turns out for you I hope I've been helpful be sure to like share and subscribe and I will see you all on the next one bye